In today's video, we're gonna take a closer look at some of the corals I picked up from those coral challenge videos, as well as take a look at some of my favorite corals and just the favorite things that I have going on in the aquarium right now. Now, if you haven't seen those coral challenge videos, they were a ton of fun to make. Me and my friend Levi, the oddball reefer, we competed to see who could get the best corals at these conventions with only $50. The first one we did on the Florida Frag Swap and I picked up a couple corals there. And then we tried the same thing just recently at Reefapalooza. So much fun, a lot happened in those videos, so I encourage you to check those out. I will leave the links in the description below. So today I wanted to make a video showcasing some of the corals in the 125 gallon reef tank, show you some of my favorite corals and even just the favorite things that are happening in the reef tank right now. And one of my favorite animals in the reef aquarium right now are the green bubble tip anemones. And this is probably my favorite side of the reef aquarium to sit back, relax and enjoy. Now, if you're considering getting a green bubble tip anemone or an anemone for your reef aquarium, then you definitely need some clownfish because just watching the skunk clownfish interact with the anemone is probably the coolest relationship to have in your aquarium. Now, of course, there's other cool reef aquarium combos like a pistol shrimp and a goby. Something like that is really cool as well. But in my aquarium, I absolutely love the bubble tip anemones even though they do like to move around the tank and I've been catching them here and there. I think I'm up to three bubble tip anemones now in the tank limate over there, but there's still three of them hanging out on this rock. And then of course one over here still by the green star polyps. I'm also gonna be sharing an update of those corals that I dipped in uh, the most recent video with flatworms. There's flatworms all over these mushroom corals and we took care of that by dipping them. So I'm gonna show you what they're looking like right now just a few days after and what they're looking like currently. And some of those are actually part of my favorite corals that are in the reef tank right now. So let's take a look at the first one. So the first mushroom coral is called a Nana Bounce Mushroom Coral and I purchased this from Odd Animal Corals out in California. Sadly, they are no longer in business, but it, this is just an awesome bounce mushroom coral to have. And right now it's looking super clean of any flatworms. The dip totally works, so if you're able to pull corals and you're a little hesitant about treating the entire reef tank like I am. You can treat different spots in different sections. And a little note for that flatworm video, those corals that I dipped were majority of the corals that I saw had a problem with flatworms. Majority of the tank is okay. I'm not seeing anything on the glass. I remember um, earlier stages of this aquarium's life, there was red planaria all over the front of the glass but that has subsided and there was just groups of them on certain corals and they tend to like the mushroom corals the most the nana bounce mushrooms are looking great there's no more flatworms on them and then the coral right next to them um, that one is just really unique and awesome to me i'm not sure of the name of it but it's got like a yellowish gold color pattern with some red it's a red mushroom but it's really awesome. And then the red mushrooms that were all grouped up on that rock holder from Printed Reef, that is doing great. Everything that made it through that Two Little Fishies Revive dip is doing great. No more flatworms on them at all. So now I wanna show you this side of the reef tank. This is where the uh, Grandmaster Krakatoa zoanthids are that I recently purchased in one of those challenge videos, but the corals from the Florida Frag Swap and the and Reefapalooza are amazing. Um, this Kenya tree is a little bit in the way, so I had to get him off of the Krakatoas because it just kept touching them and bothering them. So they kind of started to close up with that Kenya tree there. So I had to move him out of the way. Now that he's out of the way, the Krakatoas are showing themselves just fine and check out the colors of these guys. I mean, they've always kind of been a little bit outside of my price range, so I kind of had to jump on that deal to get them, but now there's three of them. I mean, I think when I purchased it, there was one and like a little tiny baby, and now there's three of them on the frag plug, and I think underneath that third one, there's already a fourth one growing, so I'm pretty excited about that. And right in front of the Grandmaster Krakatoa is the splatter hammer that I got from 
um, Florida Frag Swap, and this guy is awesome. I'm a huge Euphelia fan. That's one of my favorite corals is, would be the Frog Spawn number one, uh, then a Hammer Coral, Torch Corals, of course. I just, I love that group of coral. Um, so getting this Splatter Hammer was kind of like a starter for this aquarium to see how well the LPS will start to do in this reef aquarium. So he's been doing really, really well. The hammer coral is really awesome. So I'll probably start to add more to the reef aquarium, try to find a frog spawn. I've been looking for a frog spawn that has the purple tips for the longest time. That's what I used to have originally way back when in my uh, 29, even 75 gallon reef tank, but have yet to have a frog spawn in this aquarium. So. Maybe you know someone, maybe you have one, purple tip, green frog spawn, that would be a great coral to have in this system. And then right next to that splatter hammer, I have the zoanthid frags that I got from the uh, reef aquarium specialist at the Florida Frag Swap. So they are right next door and they are doing great. All three of those corals that I got from the challenges are doing amazing and they're some of my favorite corals in the tank so i thought i would share them with you in this video all right so now for a little behind the scenes after the challenge was completed at reef of palooza i had to go back to the coral king booth because those mushrooms that he has in there are truly outstanding the colors the green and the yellow one is amazing so i had to pick that up as well and that guy is right over here and i have him in a printed reef sand stand as well. Now, if you're confused as to why I keep saying printed reef, what is printed reef? What do they do? Well, they have 3D printed solutions for your reef aquarium and they have uh, awesome tools for your aquarium like the uh, printed reef sand stand. That's a way to put corals into the sand stand, mount them down into the sand so they're not gonna get knocked over by any snails or any other inhabitants of your reef tank. They also have the rock holder that helps hold your corals in your rock work. And all of these 3D printed pieces are very uh, unique and very helpful at mounting corals around your reef tank without having to permanently put them somewhere. If you wanna change them up later, you can go ahead and move them around. You can pick up the sand stand, put it in a new spot. Same with the rock holder. So if you wanna save 10% off of your order of printed reef, 3D printed products, head on over to printedreef.com slash the coral reef talk. Save on all of your goodies over there. Your coral frags are gonna love it. So there's a lot of stuff happening in the 125 gallon reef tank and I plan to constantly keep you guys updated as to what's going on, what corals I'm adding. And if you enjoyed this video, then I know you're gonna enjoy this one right here. So go ahead and click or tap the screen, especially if you haven't seen this coral challenge video. It's a lot of fun, go ahead and check that out. Thank you so much for watching, liking, and subscribing, and I'll see you in the next one.